come to this program. It's the Bible journey. Thank you very much for joining us today on our discussion. We are looking at the book of Exodus chapter 31 and uh, basically about two things, the artisans for building the tabernacle and the Sabbath law. And uh, we hope that by the end of this discussion, we'll have uh, benefited a lot from what the pastors are going to share with us. And of course, talking about the pastors, I have with me Pastor Peter Nyaga. Welcome, Pastor, to our discussion today. Thank you so much, Rachel. Wow, thank you. And uh, also, we have our pastor <laughs> in a nice tie, Pastor Dan Abuya. Welcome, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, glad to be here. Your tie is nice too. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah. also on the <laughs> right hand side, yours is also very smart, Pastor uh, Kabira Wakabira. Welcome. I appreciate as always. Thank you. Wow, well, thank you very much. And as we begin now, I'll welcome Pastor Nyaga to, to pray for us. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much once again today for giving us this moment to come and have time to share from the scriptures. We invite your presence to abide with us together with our viewers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, pastors, welcome to our study of the book of Exodus and uh, chapter 31. Now, let me just have an introduction because we are talking about the building of the tabernacle. Of course, we already looked at how the tabernacle should be built and all the materials that should be involved in that work. Mm -hmm. But now, we are now into those people who should be involved in the same, the builders of that particular tabernacle. Now, let's have introductions either from the tabernacle or the building process or anything, just introductions. I'll start with Pastor Nyaga. Thank you. Thank you, Retemo. I think here we have um, uh, the first uh, few verses from 1 to verse number 11. Mm. We're paying attention to the art sons. And who happens to be, <coughs> you know, sons of Uri who was also a son of uh, her. And of course, we, remember, we know the connection. Because remember, when Moses was going on the mountain, he left uh, this particular man, her, in charge of uh, judging, you know, and taking, keeping order within the camp. Mm -hmm. So this is a family that is well connected in terms of uh, the leadership of the Israelites in the wilderness. But the sons now were skilled and they were employed if for this particular service when they came to the construction or building of the, of the tabernacle. So it's a family that is, uh, the sons that come from a family that has been serving God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's what okay. I can okay. say. Okay, Pastor Dan? Yeah, indeed, uh, that is uh, the case. We haven't begun building uh, the tabernacle yet, really. Mm. Still, uh, Moses is receiving instructions that God is making provision for everything, mm. not only the blueprint, but who are going to carry it out. Mm. So he's still recording. So as he goes down, actually, he already has got, um, uh, you know, a catalog mm. of the people who will be engaged in uh, building, the yeah. actual when, when the actual building uh, begins here. So Moses is still up in the mountain, and uh, God reveals to him even the people that, uh, whose services he could procure mm -hmm. wow, for this wow. work. Wow, right. Pastor mm. Kabira. Um... Everything has a purpose. Everybody has a purpose and everybody has a contribution to make. The most uh, beautiful thing here I would love is God is still saying and speaking of more people. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-man show. It's not a two-man show. The, the list of people is expanding. The number of people being involved is more. Mm -hmm. And that is the beautiful thing that I'm able to get. So for me, I'll say I'm glad in terms of God is seeing a way in which to include people. We may have been saying there are special people. We may be saying there are special people. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. may be saying the priests. You mm -hmm. know, the preference has been priest, priest, priest. Moses, Moses, Moses. Everybody. But then all of a sudden, we see people who are doing things that even maybe you will not even consider something important where nobody writes, where nobody recognizes them. Mm -hmm. God is able to recognize even the silent word, the silent workmanship uh, that people do not recognize. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and you know, most importantly here is that um, uh, these uh, are uh, workers who don't seem to be directly mm -hmm. uh, participating in mm -hmm. the temple service, that's, uh, the, 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 t this, uh, the priestly services mm -hmm. that we've been talking about. But what I love is when you read verse uh, 3, it says that I fill him 
with the spirit of God mm -hmm. in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. So this aspect of God filling the Holy Spirit uh, upon these workers, uh, it's not only here. It continues. Mm -hmm. All the other workers uh, down also will be doing other things. God had filled them with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, in verse 6 also the same thing comes. In other words, the same Spirit that uh, you know, moves, that gives an unction for the priestly services, is the same Holy Spirit also mm -hmm. who gives wisdom in carrying out other background services, support services mm -hmm. uh, in the work of God. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it and I was just uh, joking earlier on that this is a professional square. Uh, ex this particular you chapter, say that. God is involving right. professionals in his work and uh, God seems to be so particular and you know, remember some time back you talked about uh, there is no amateur work that is taking place. God is not really taking anything for chances, right. but mm. he is so particular in whatever he's doing. And you know, like uh, talking about now this being uh, involving professionals in mm. the work, Pastor Nyaga, just as a way of digression, though it's still here, how, how is it, how, how important is it to involve such professional experience in the church service in uh, evangelism in reaching out and you know winning more souls to Christ how important is involving professionals in it it's very important because the skills that we have in this life are God given mm -hmm. for the purposes of serving him one simple analogy is um, of the story of Moses mm -hmm. you know when Moses was called to go to deliver the children of Israel the stories that we've been discussing he was a shepherd mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we can say that his profession was um, that of tending the, 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 the sheep. And he had uh, an instrument of power, that the rod. So when God appears to him and says, up nothing, he says, no, you have something. Your livelihood is determined by this rod. Mm -hmm. So go with what you have. And uh, again, as uh, you know, w when you look at what we've been seeing all through, that God is very specific. You know, he's a God of uh, excellence. He goes for the best. That's right. But I want to note something in verse number three, mm. even as we talk about the importance of bringing professionals in the service of God. Mm. It's not every profession that God requires. I mean, God, it's not the profession that comes number one yeah. in, in choosing you. That is something which is more important than having a profession. But if you have it and then you are a, profession, you are a professional, then God considers you more. Mm. So in verse number three says, that I have filled him, you know, concerning uh, Bazalel. It says, and I have chosen him, mm, but I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, knowledge yeah. and in all manner of workmanship. Mm. Now, I want you to note that this is a man filled <coughs> with the Spirit mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. There were so many artisans, professionals in that area, but God found this man is filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if you're an accountant, not every accountant can be a church treasurer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course, on the same, uh, mm -hmm. how, how then do we create the balance between the skill? And of course, you know, filled by the Spirit, well, even today. You see, if you are filled with the Spirit of God, mm. you will manifest the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. So it is not difficult for the church to know a man who is filled with the Spirit of God. Because you, you, you don't front your career, your profession in church. You must be subdued. So if you are a professional, you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, you are whatever you are, mm. an architect, but you, you live in pride, you know, of this life, we will know. Because the Spirit of God gives and creates humility within the heart of mm. an individual. The right. meekness that we see in, in, in Moses. Mm. So if you are a professional in church mm. and you are broken down by the Spirit of God, there's no limit to how much God is going to use you. But if you come because you think you have some skills and you want to, to, to bring the concept and the ideas from the corporate world into the house of God, without the spirit of God, mm -hmm. you will cause a lot of 
mess in the Church of God. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. And uh, of course, apart from uh, uh, this guy, Bezalel, and you know, I can't imagine God calling me by name and saying, you know, I have appointed Ratemo. He will be, he'll do this and that mm -hmm. and that, you know. It must have been very, you know, created joy <laughs> within them That's to right. realize that I've been called by, by name. You know, like just as he called Cyrus the king by name. That's right. You know, it's something very spectacular, I think, to me. Yeah, and but, but that really is what matters. is done to you, Nick. Yeah. I mean, that's the producer of yeah. uh, the show, <laughs> where you're working, all our, you know, the experts behind the cameras here. Yeah. That is exactly what God has done. Mm -hmm. So, right. and, and right. we, so need, we, we need to think of it from that angle then your service and the way you do it, mm -hmm. it changes, wow, it totally wow, sure, changes. Sure, sure. So we that. are also very special. We have been called. It might not have been indicated here. Of course, this is just an encouragement to me right. and uh, the crew uh, that uh, we are very special yes, and the work exactly. we are doing is very special. Not everyone mm. who came from college with you mm. is fit is to here. serve in this particular yes. media. That's oh. right, yeah. You can serve in any other place, but mm. not this particular media. They have media. skills. But the wisdom and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> which we believe. You know, uh, I so hope my camera, my dear cameraman and lady, and the director are listening and the other producers, we are very special. Amen. Well, okay. Amen. Now, let's, uh, apart from uh, this guy, Bel, uh, Bezalel, uh, Bezalel mm. there is another guy in verse 6. Uh, and I, indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahi, Ahisamach. Ahisamach mm. of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded you. So there is uh, this one also, and there are others, many, all the artisans God has given wisdom to, the, to them, which just by a way of starting is that even the skills that we have seem to all come from the Lord. When you're prospering in your profession, right. God is the one who has filled you with those skills. Because like he says, I've put wisdom in the hearts of all gifted artisans. So by extension, that is what I would want to say And uh, as I bring in Pastor Kabira. <coughs> um, I'm just appreciating how God is able to look for the best. Mm. When God wants uh, something, he sa he ends chapter one of us uh, G of Genesis chapter one verse thirty one, and indeed he saw everything that he had made was very good. Mm. He's the same God who says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. He's the same God who speaks of the glory of uh, God that was seen on the mountain. He's the same who speaks of the clothes as glory as bringing glory and beauty. So every time God does things, he does them in an excellent way, regardless of who or what mm. is being subjected. Mm. If it was on a mountain, if you see the Sinai mountains, they're not pretty. But when God was there, they were just so beautiful. Mm. Oh, they were right. saying, you know, like uh, under the feet was sapphire. It's like mm -hmm. a pavement of sapphire, you mm. know, of the best, the glory. It's like a calm heavens. Now picture that God picks somebody from the tribe of Judah, fills him with the spirit of God and wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Then he goes ahead and goes to another extreme, mm. picks a random guy from the tribe of Dan. That's right. Very rare. That's right. I, I know it's Dan is here, but yes, <laughs> but anyway still. Yeah. He picks from the tribe of Dan a nobody. Let me call him a nobody. Mm. I was just trying to Google up and see where these names have been used. Rarely were people from the tribe of Dan mentioned or needed per se. They were just one of those, you know, to fill up the 12. I know God has a purpose, mm. but they're just basically yeah, from a random... Like you are responding. Uh, 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 <laughs> in <laughs> sense, you know, I know. <laughs> it's like even saying, mm. how does God choose Pastor Dan here mm. from where he is? Right. He has a different degree, by the way. I should, I should be able to say. Uh, mm. And then God calls him from there. In a class of your gradu graduating class of so many, he says, Pastor Dan, I need you to come because I want to fill you with the spirit. I want you to, uh, you know, like how he talks, uh, I have put wisdom in you. I want to fill you up that you can also serve with me. So basically he's putting Bezalel and Ahiliab to be in charge of the rest of the artisans. Mm -hmm. They are the best in their respective fields, but they are not the best from their tribe. 
but they are the best because God has chosen them. Put them together. Uh, ideally, God doesn't want a one-man show. No. You know, like I am the best of the best. Mm -hmm. I can to pick the best. Right. You know, he, the two of them will serve together. And then they'll be under other artisans. He's basically putting, they'll be directors, but I don't want you to say you're the CEO, you cannot be questioned, mm. something like that. But even if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will work with the following man. And under that, I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans. Mm -hmm. Then he now blesses the rest. But my, my, let me just put my emphasis how God is able to call somebody who is a nondescript, somebody who really, you know, if, they, if people were applying for jobs, you know, I always see advertisements uh, to apply for the job of a PS, uh, mm. a permanent secretary. Mm. <laughs> and I always say, let me try and apply. Then I remember, <laughs> anyway, that, that was just a good joke, and that's all. Uh, but you know, what God is literally doing is saying, don't worry, I'll pick you from where you are. Mm. Because when you will go again, you'll not be able to find this name of Aholiab again as frequently as you'll maybe expect from the tribe of Benjamin, tribe mm. of Judah, you know, right. tribe, mm. you know. But he just, that is how God is just able to pluck you, put you here. Just think of uh, your story, the way you were telling us mm. about how you came to be here. Now you're here hosting a particular show. Where I came from, I did not think of that. Somebody else has got a different story. Coming from a place where, if uh, when we were doing the 10-year challenge, you remember? Mm, yeah, if yeah. you, I did not do myself because yeah. the person on negative 10 and the one who is here, they look totally different. Yeah. Because, but that is how God is able to, you know, take your ten-year challenge and make it look like this man has always deserved of the highest honor. Wow! And this, uh, you know, just uh, adding voice on mm. on that when you go to chapter thirty-five, mm. when actually now they are now doing the real work, mm. you are going to see that it is quite a raft of workers. I mean, I mean, mm. thousands were. A lot, it was a big team. So these guys are like the project managers. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, verse 10, for example, it adds, all who are gifted at sons among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Verse 25 of uh, 35, it adds, all the women who are gifted at sons span yarn with their hands. So there was quite a huge team behind the building of the tabernacle. So, uh, you, you know, the, that, that concept once again of uh, these are the heads, they're going to manage or be in charge of the project mm. but every person who had some gifting or had some expertise they were meant to give it uh, freely uh, lavishly uh, for the uh, preparation of the wow. sanctuary wow. for wow. the lord yeah. wow. so I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the building mm. of the tabernacle and um, I'm, I'm, I'm comparing it with the exposition of paul when he says that the church is actually the building of christ mm. christ is a builder so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring the, the issue of a uh, type and anti-type here. And I see then uh, there's a level as a type of Christ in building the church. Mm. And then Christ, uh, God has given Christ, you know, the ministers who oversee. Because here, a whole year is, is, is like uh, the overseer of the project. And then we have people under him. Now, who are busy actually building the church. Mm. And I, I see a good, uh, you know, picture of how the, the, the church is built, spiritual church, mm. where we have Christ, then we have the, the, the ministers, and then we have the lay people who are busy now. I, I know when we go to chapter 5, I think that's what Pastor Dan was trying to bring out. Mm -hmm. The actual work of laying one brick on top of the other is done by members mm. and they're there with their wives and their children they're busy doing it so i, I see god was communicating some something in this that the church of god should be built by everyone mm -hmm. but as a building every single person mm. has an assignment a particular assignment yeah. that he need to do mm. such that uh, th this man called Bezalel and, and, and his, 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 his colleague who he has been given, Aholia, uh, in, in verse number four, they have very specific duty. And then they have a team, a huge team now, mm. who they are working with. And so yes. everyone is involved in building mm -hmm. the sanctuary. One thing I must mm -hmm. add also is that uh, um, sometimes you may look arbitrary, but actually you look, there are actual reasons because the other artisans that we later meet, mm. somebody is gifted, for example, in hammering out gold. Mm. But but you notice these two gentlemen. I I have uh, I'm convinced that Bezalel seems to be the the, the head, mm. and uh, Holiab yes, seems yes, to yes, be the yes, assistant. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But but you see Bezalel, what is he gifted in? 
Hebrews 3 says that in all manner, mm. uh, in what all manner of workmanship. So he's good in gold, mm -hmm. also he's, he's good uh, in wood carving, mm -hmm. he's also good uh, in uh, masonry, you see there. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, like the talents, uh, five, two, mm -hmm. and one. So, so now you realize that mm. God is not just being arbitrary. No. He is able to have a, a good, he has a refined view of a wide spectrum. Mm. Yes. And so he can uh, yeah. properly. Can I say right. something on leadership? Okay. I'm just looking at the leadership qualities. There are the spiritual angle, but then there is the practical angle. Yeah, right. Not just men filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and then that's all. Right, right. There is much more to it. He says, uh, look at... Uh, Bezalel, I filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in, in knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. You know, God has already given him that. Mm. And I wish our leaders would go to that extent. You know, we will, when we're electing leaders, we look at somebody who's got wisdom, how to handle issues, right. understanding, mm. knowledge. But at the same time, it's not just uh, a spiritually full man. But when it comes to other things, he's yeah. not. I was mm. listening to President, so I was imagining mm. we can have a leader who doesn't know. He's filled with the Holy Spirit, right. but he cannot control a meeting, mm -hmm. for example. <laughs> he's very wonderful. Yeah, give him a chance to pray, but then he cannot even project his voice. He cannot even do notes. He cannot interpret something simple. So it comes back to the Lord equips you if he calls you. But then also, you'll need to do your part mm -hmm. in uh, physically. You'll need to be able Being to direct, your use your talents mm -hmm. for the right purpose. So you may be a producer. God calls you, yes, but you need to have the requisite skills. You need to go to school. Mm -hmm. Just That's like right. Moses went to school, by uh, the way. Mm -hmm. yeah, Moses is allowed time to yeah, go to school. I, I went. You I know, went, I can mm -hmm. assure you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of and course, I also uh, went. Th there is this verse that says, whom he calls, he qualifies. Which is that verse? Mm. He, he actually he calls people and mm -hmm. he even qualifies he will them. Equip so you are you saying that the Holy Spirit is important. Uh, you will be filled with him, but you need also to be qualified. So it's not yeah, uh, one independent of the other. That is well, right. Thank right. you. Thank you. Let's take a short break on the Bible journey and uh, we'll be back to continue the discussion. Remember, it's the book of Exodus chapter 31. Welcome back, our dear viewer, to this show. It's the Bible journey. Thank you very much for being with us here today as we continue uh, with our study of the book of Exodus, chapter 31. So welcome back, my dear pastors, as we continue our study also. And uh, Pastor Dan, you, uh, what else do you see here, especially in terms of, uh, you know, God has called people. Right. And he says, I've qualified them, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to do this work. Of course, this is all in preparation. The work has not yet started. Right. Uh, and uh, I think, again, another lesson that I'm getting out of that is that uh, we need to plan in advance That's before right. we start. Because Christ also takes uh, uh, uses a parable. Is it a parable? Mm -hmm. He says that who can Starts start building, and then you reach somewhere... You, yeah. you have to really Counting plan cost, yeah. and account every cost. Mm. So what else do you see here you up to verse 11? Um, you know, later on when the temple, the temple itself, Solomon's temple is being built, mm. you, you see an exact replica of what you're seeing here. And um, if, if we could uh, read uh, in, in First Kings, mm -hmm. First Kings uh, chapter 5, you see what, what the Lord uh, does. I think we might have shared this in an earlier episode. Mm, yeah. But uh, again, once again, when Solomon is preparing to build a temple in chapter 5, he realizes that he misses certain skills within his people. And so he writes to Hiram, the king of Tyre. That is from verse 1 now. Mm -hmm. And there's a letter there from verse uh, 2 to verse uh, 6. It's a letter written. Mm -hmm. It's a diplomatic letter dispatched to the king requesting... Uh, for experts in building the house uh, 
of the Lord. Because in verse 6 it closes by saying that for you know there is none among us who are skilled to cut timber like the Sidonians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Hiram was very happy when he heard these words, verse 7 says, and uh, rejoiced greatly and said, you know, he praises God. He feels the privilege mm. of uh, partaking of the building mm. of the temple. Mm. Mm. And so he sent him uh, several guys, a big labor force. In verse 18, we are told, so Solomon's builders, that is the home guys, the now expatriates, Hiram's builders and the Gebalites, now these are the experts who had to come in so that the temple of God would be built properly. Yeah. In other words, no compromise once again. The very best was given for God. God does, does not appreciate mediocrity mm -hmm. at all. And you know, sometimes uh, it's actually saddening, the churches of God. Sometimes you have gone to some place, perhaps in the province, or even some of the towns, and you're passing by and you see uh, on a roof uh, <laughs> the name of our church. Of church and yeah. you feel sad and embarrassed mm -hmm. even to identify with that. Because it's in some nondescript place, hidden mm -hmm. somewhere, crumbling, almost falling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that does not reflect yeah, really yeah, sure, of, of sure, who God is. So we need to give the very best. And this is a challenge, you know, to us, all of us, as, uh, as worshippers, as a priesthood of believers. It is not befitting that we live in paneled great houses and homes mm -hmm. and you find structures which are called by the name of God. They are in a sorry state. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, I minister to young people. I'm a chaplain to young people. Mm. We need to be excellent. All the guys who were called to stand before the Lord in carrying out this work, they were not guys, they were not uh, D or C or B mm -hmm. uh, materials. They these were, were A, a materials. These were A materials, mm. yeah. yeah. So uh, Solomon put it properly when he said in uh, Proverbs 22 verse 29, that do you see a man who is excellent in mm -hmm. their work, mm. they will stand before kings. kings. Mm -hmm. They will not stand before common people. Wow. So Excellency. we need to be excellent. We need to be at our very best so that God can use us to lift up his name. Wow. Uh, and I like it the way you brought in First Kings chapter 5 that uh, God is also involving other people in his service. Other nations, that is to say, because he writes to a king who is not among us there is uh, not really Israel, mm -hmm. but other people. So even in his salvation, it extends to all the people. It's not just about a particular people. Even preaching the gospel, it's mm -hmm. about everybody. That's right. yeah, I, I wanted to emphasize the point. You know, we are talking about excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, serving God. So that we don't mistake that God is, you know, what you call excellence in our terms, it's mm. not what God calls excellence mm -hmm. in his terms. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, just going back to the verse number six, going back to the verse number six, mm. and I in, in my, version, my version here says, uh, and uh, I indeed, and I indeed, I have ap appointed with him a Holiab, the son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded. Now, if you read from a version, there's something you miss out. Mm. But if you read from King James Version, then uh, you discover something that God looked at. I don't know whether your version is King James the Version. The is New King James. The, it, What's it, the word you're the, looking now, for? Now, in the King James Version, I wa was looking for this word, I've got it from this other gadget I have here. And I, behold, I have given with him Eholiab, the son of Heismach, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God had a criteria. You know, if you read from um, uh, the, the, the New American Version, uh, which I have here, assumes that he chose those who had skilled. They had gone through mm -hmm. the end of A, as Pastor Dan says. Mm -hmm. And so he just picked them and then he gave them wisdom. Mm -hmm. But... King James communicated differently. He says he looked at the heart of those who were wise. Wise-hearted people are the ones that filled with his wisdom. So th to me this is very, very important. There's a mm -hmm. criteria that God uses to choose people. We have A students. We have, we have first class honors students in architect or wherever. Then God comes when you have all this qualification, both of you, excellent qualification, mm -hmm. then just looking at your heart. Mm -hmm. All right. And then he picks the heart which is upright. So don't come 
demanding because you're an architect. <laughs> that I <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come here then, <laughs> call me too. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, th that's why I'm, I'm getting this a very, very <laughs> yeah, strong sure, sure. point. Yeah. Uh, he says, and I behold, and I behold, I have given and, with And by the way, let me read that part for you, mm. verse 6, the beginning part. Okay. You'll understand the weight mm. that he puts on himself. Yes. He says, and I, yes. indeed, I. indeed I. Oh, that's, right. ah, that's what the version says. It's yeah, very strong. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's God doing it, but he communicates the criteria he uses to choose. So if we have a, a thousand members, uh, out of a thousand members we have a hundred lawyers. Not every lawyer in that church can represent God. No. Not every architect in church can represent God. Mm -hmm. There's another step which is very, very critical to God. A heart which is, and we want to talk about wise heartened person. The wisdom here is a heart that is upright with the Lord. Mm. That's what God looks at. Wow, wow. Yeah, this seems to, to be quite interesting, but there is an also another aspect as we just move forward, unless uh, there's something you want. Yeah, of course, from verse 12, uh, it's about the Sabbath law. And uh, I, I guess even our viewer at home, you're able to appreciate this, that the Lord keeps on, you know, it's, uh, well, it's number what? Uh, I think we are talking about the, the Sabbath more than a uh, fourth time, more than a fifth time. And we are still going to. We'll we are still going to are talk about yet. it. We are That's not right. yet over with it. But, but he keeps on the Sabbath. The, Sabbath. The, the, the issue of Sabbath. Sabbath has been mentioned numerous times in the Bible. Yeah. We so mm. get prepared for that. This yeah. is the Bible journey. So I can just <laughs> imagine <laughs> when we want to trash down the Sabbath and uh, say it doesn't matter. It's impossible. It's impossible. Any day, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's quite, uh, you know, you really need to. Stopping Sabbath is like stopping sun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From shining, it's, it's impossible. It's like if you'd have to remove Sabbath from the scriptures, you'd have to remove several pages. Not several. Uh, I'm saying you can't stop sun from shining. Yeah. <laughs> it's an impossibility. Okay, now from number 12, he says, mm. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Before mm -hmm. I even continue from uh, to 14, I think it's the first time he's saying these words. It is a sign between me and you. Has he said it before, really? He has, of course, talked about the Sabbath, honoring it, and all those aspects. But it's the first time I'm reading, unless I've forgotten, where he says, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. Pastor Kabira. Um, let me just link in the two. These are the last words of God mm. on the mountain. Okay. Uh, so yes, after yes. this? After this, now we'll transition to... Uh, we come down. Moses, the Moses, Moses come now down. comes down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is his conclusion. Take oh. it as a conclusion. Right. Mm. So many things. Uh, um, Africans, especially pastors, we are told we don't know how to do conclusion. We say, as I finish, <laughs> as I conclude, as I finally. end, finally, finally, so many. But God goes specifically. Right. Mm. So you see, he, he says, uh, so Moses, I know you're tired from writing. It's been 40 days and 40 nights. Mm. So let me tell you the summary of all these things. Mm. Wow. Sabbath. Wow. Wow, wow. What was it? You, you know, if you what, look what, which words did he start with, by the way, on the mountain? What uh, did he he says, uh, oh, remember what he said. Mm. Uh, uh, while he was on the mountain, mm. he begins by yeah. saying, After that he is chapter calls 20. Moses, actually, it's chapter 19, verse 25, Moses goes. Yes, chapter 19, verse 25, but it, be it, began, it begins uh, most of this uh, mm -hmm. discussion, apart from the preparatory part of it. Mm -hmm. The, the, the whole it begins from chapter 20. Chapter 20. Yes, it God was. Spoke all and yes, God spoke begins. all these words saying, mm. I am the Lord, your the God. Lord. Mm -hmm. So now understand it, everything. You know, God is doing a summary. Moses. So essentially, by the way, he starts, rather, he starts rather with the Sabbath. Things, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> he starts with the Sabbath mm. and ends, he concludes with the Sabbath. Leave, leave alone even starting and ending. He, he inserts it here. He inserts it there. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's the basic of everything. I will explain Sabbath in uh, some few minutes. Eh? Mm. Uh, what he does is he's explained. Remember, he's talking about uh, the, the work of the what the tabernacle. Mm. He explains the tabernacle, how you will be made holy, how the priest should do things, how the adsons will be excellent, how uh, the priest should be excellent, how everything will be excellent. But then in the end, he says, For surely my Sabbaths you shall keep. But there's something that ends there. For that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. 
don't forget, you will have the temple. You will have holy people. You will have the priest. But don't forget, all third, ideally, it's me mm -hmm. who sanctifies you. We were talking about in chapter 30 about washing of hands, sanctifying. The incense, uh, the, the, the anointing oil, and all That's these fine. other things. We have the mercy seat, the most holy thing, the most holy place. But he says, don't forget, it is me who, who sanctifies not you. Not those things. Not those things. Mm. Yeah, you, ideally, yes, you know, Moses may have been, oh, wow, we are going to have so many holy things. You know, the, the list of holiness things that is, you know, the holy things that are being listed, especially the ones that we are doing in verse uh, 7, 8, and 9. Mm -hmm. There were so many holy things that will be used. But then, Moses, then he says, surely, just use the word surely, my Sabbaths you shall keep. Don't forget the minimum, the base of it is worship. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, in the end, it's worship. To God. I know you, you're thinking of everything else, but the basics of everything. The reason as to why I'm giving you this long speech, the reason as to why I've kept you on this mountain for 40 days, the reason as to why I wrote the Ten Commandments, you wrote your own things, don't forget, it's worship. And it's best exemplified by the Sabbath. Wow. I, I, I wanted to come in, and, mm. and, and, and <laughs> to me, this is very striking. Mm. Very striking. Uh, the, the place where God, you know, brings the issue of Sabbath. It's very strategic. You see, he has been, uh, it, it's, it's about now building the, the, the sanctuary. He has called the art sons. Uh, and uh, when you look at the opening ones, the, the, the verse, verse number the 12 and 13, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak also. I'm interested with that, but also, mm. that term. Speak also. Meaning, when he says speak also to the children of Israel, it means he has spoken to another group. Mm -hmm. And this group, then, in my opinion, is the art sons, the builders. He has given them clear, you know, guidelines on how to. Mm. I am a, it's my assumption, a very strong assumption, that he has already directed them and advised them. When you're building the sanctuary, I've employed you in this, but remember Sabbath. Mm. No, the builders are very aware of that. So he says, also speak the children of Israel, saying, surely my Sabbath you shall keep. Also notice, it's not my Sabbath, but my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. not, it's, it's, it's not, if you would have seen my Sabbath, it would mean one, maybe that yearly Sabbath. Mm. But it talks about Sabbath because these are weekly Sabbath, there will be many, and the time when the construction of uh, the building of the sanctuary starts, to the time when it is ending, there will be so many Sabbaths in between here. Mm. And because now God is employing them with the urgency of building the sanctuary, they may forget and imagine that God would want them even to consider building the sanctuary on Sabbath. Mm. Yeah, so because they are doing a holy work. Yeah, yeah. they're doing a holy It's God who has instructed. Mm. So he tells them, remem remind them that my Sabbath you shall, surely you shall surely keep. And maybe talk to my, our viewers and let them know. When God has blessed you, mm. he has employed you to work in that office, he reminds you to observe Sabbath. You know, uh, many times when people, you know, you're tamaking, you're struggling, and then finally you get a job, and this job you have to work on Sabbath, you say, God, you're the one who gave me. Yeah, you understand. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that he says, also speak to them, the children of Israel, because I want to mention, yes, already spoken their sons. So God is very strict with the rest of, of Sabbath. In the Ten Commandments, because we saw the Ten Commandments, he speaks so clearly, you keep Sabbath holy mm -hmm. because I also kept it holy. And he says, I've given you six days to work. So it doesn't matter what kind of employment that God has given you. He has given you six days. Mm. And you remember we have been talking about boundaries? Don't bypass that boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your lot is six days. Mm -hmm. let, let me ask this. Uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, especially you emphasized on this point, surely my Sabbath. Yes, yes. Then when you move down to verse 14, 14 yeah. now he concentrates on now what is now Sabbath. Sabbath. No, yeah. It's not Sabbath, mm. it's just Sabbath. Sabbath. Right. The, and you know the mm. definite article there. Mm. You shall keep the Sabbath. Sabbath. Therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people, which we said is actually you are eliminated from that particular congregation. You are not supposed to be within the camp of Israelites. Now, so you could do until 17. 
Mm -hmm. Just yes. okay, until yeah. 17. It's, it's seven. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. covenant. Perpetual. Okay, this is 17. It is a sign between me and, and the children of Israel mm. forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. and on the seventh day mm -hmm. rested and was refreshed. Of course, he's re-emphasizing re Exodus chapter 20 from verse 8, 8 to 11. 11 yeah. mm -hmm. Th that's a point I was saying. Between the time they start building the sanctuary to the time when they are going to complete building the sanctuary, mm -hmm. there will be several weekly Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. And even the year. So don't forget and about, Sabbath, and that's why I said he's not he's talking so about the year is Sabbath. Mm. You know, this is very specific. He's so he's talking about the, the Sabbath. Mm. But it says there will be several Sabbaths here when you start constructing, which by principle you may think that I would require, you, this is a unique situation you're in, there's agents of constructing. And so you may think that because this has come from God, mm. we can also construct on Sabbath. So, f and that's why now down there, for him to clear the doubts of what Sabbath is talking about, then so it says the Sabbath. And he explains, it's very clear, it's the one which he gave the weekly Sabbath. So the, f the, the, the first, um, uh, in, in verse number 13, it takes my Sabbaths, does not take us to any other Sabbath. Mm. It's, 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 it's a plural of the weekly Sabbath because of the many times they are going to have this particular worship while they are constructing. Mm -hmm. The context here, the background here mm -hmm. is construction, That's the building. Okay. They should have served when they're building. Uh, so there will be many Sabbaths where they're building, but uh, they should keep the Sabbath. Which Sabbath? The weekly Sabbath, because I got a house of rest and when I was creating, wow. to do the same. Wow. Pastor Dan. Right, yeah. Uh, just in addition to that, I want to point out that, you know, at this stage in time, um, uh, you know, the, the elders, <laughs> I don't know if they got tired or something, <laughs> you know, they had been left somewhere behind. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And um, they go down and... Uh, and they start <laughs> doing their own things. Maybe food we, we, may, we may see maybe <laughs> the, the next week when, when we do another episode. Mm. Uh, so the element of worship uh, is being emphasized here. Yes. Really. That, that's, that's what I want to add here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The element of worship, who to worship, how to worship, and why to worship. Because already God knows. <laughs> God knows the mess already that people are in. Mm. The, the impatience, the way we always, uh, you know, people's own righteousness, we, we, we will see better, you know, in the next uh, chapter when we do that here. Yeah. So really, uh, God is returning once again that all these things, as uh, Pastor Kabira said, you may do them, but there is the human tendency to distort, you mm. know, meanings, the essence of, of yes. things. Mm -hmm. You see nowadays, uh, I mean, if you've gone to some museums, you see something kept there and they say that oh, this was a piece of wood which came from the cross of Christ. Mm. <laughs> and people start worshipping it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no holiness there. Yeah. All these things, the lava, the, 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 the deportments, mm. all these things, the, the altars, they have nothing. They are stones, mm. basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. They are important, but they are not the focus. They, they are only important. Look, <laughs> yeah. they become if important yeah. just because of, of the, the presence. Okay. The presence of God, God. period. Mm. No, nothing yes. more. The only thing that makes it important uh, is because God is there. And uh, that is what, uh, that's what I wanted to emphasize. Mm -hmm. Strength, yeah. In uh, chapter 29, verse mm. 43. Mm -hmm. We, we had done this in an earlier episode. 43 says, And there I will meet with the children of Israel. On the mercy seat, yeah. And the tabernacle, yeah, that's right. And the tabernacle shall be sanctified. What By sanctifies it? Mm -hmm. His glory. By my glory. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what brings the sanctification? What makes these things holy? It is the it's presence God. of God. God. That is what sanctifies, period. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the altar, I mean, kids can play, they can mm -hmm. arrange stones yes, yes. Uh, they are doing a play or whatever mm -hmm. it's not it is god's glory mm -hmm. yes. that sanctifies so, so god is emphasizing here that okay you know what guys all these things you will do them but these are emblems mm -hmm. don't yes, transfer yes, the word is emblems. Mm -hmm. their sanctity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there and start worshiping those items mm -hmm. it is me you are worshiping mm -hmm. they are only facilitating so can even, i say even even the sabbath mm -hmm. as you say it uh, even the sabbath is only uh, it's sanctified by God. It only makes sense when God is in it. But the otherwise of the Sabbath. Have. What I will say is, uh, the conclusion, what you said is, it's because 
the seventh day will not be important yeah. if God exactly. will not set it apart. Yeah, right. Because yeah. anyway, it's just like Monday. The yeah, sun yeah, rises it's, it's a day. day. And sets in the west. Well, because it's one, I have a minute, we have a minute, let me just say, hmm. God is really being very strategic. Hmm. He says the only thing that will last forever. It's All right. right. Remember what uh, I hope you just say, it will be a perpetual covenant. Mm. Verse 7 says, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. forever. Mm. So the rest of the things, they will pass yeah. away. They will pass away. <laughs> yeah, by the but way, what will the remain is will be the Sabbath. Yeah. Not yeah. up to the cross, mm -hmm. not up to anything else. No. Forever. End, forever. That's why God says in Matthew 5 verse 19, the earth has not gone away. Why are you thinking about changing what even That's he has right, put? Yeah. Mm. So in the end, for me, I let me, wow. Anyway, time is up. Yeah, says, it's it's no, be, be, before time is up, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, where John is saying time is up. Yeah, 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 because yeah. Time, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> verse 18, yeah. the time is very, very Verse 18. And when he had made an end of the speed, of course, this is the last verse in this chapter. When he had made an end of the speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. We can't miss this. Yeah, yeah, we can. We can't miss this. Yeah. This is very, very important for mm. this discussion. You know, when we're talking about Sabbath, we already saw in chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, that Sabbath is the fourth commandment. Now, among the fourth, the commandments of God, the Bible here says that actually God himself wrote. wrote. We right. know His that Moses finger. was requesting to write, but of the, the, tab the two tablets of stone, which contain the 10 commandments, mm. were written by the finger of God. That's right. This how serious God wanted to communicate the importance of the law of God. Mm -hmm. And many people have argued and said we are no longer under the, the, the law of God. The Ten Commandments were done away mm -hmm. with. Yeah, I was just checking a commentary here. I can't yeah. mention the name of that commentary. It says, we Christians, we don't observe Sabbath. Mm. Because it was for Jews. Mm -hmm. There's a big heresy out there. Mm. We, the commandment we of God. We that it started before the Jews. The commandment of God were written with the finger of God to show that mm. they are permanent mm -hmm. across all generations. And by the way, the rest of the things we've been talking about, it's Moses. Right? Moses right? Let me tell you, yeah. Moses Moses this Bible, but Exodus 20 from this verse Bible, 20 to 17. Listen to me, Latemo. This Bible mm -hmm. has been written by over 40 men. Yeah. I've written this Bible. Yeah. But the Ten Commandment, God could not allow Trust any man to write. write. <laughs> He had to write. To that's write what the fourth himself. commandment of Sabbath is. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we say that uh, just come uh, on uh, by yourself. <laughs> Do not send a representative. <laughs> Thank you very much, our viewer, for being with us on this discussion. It has been a nice study, of course. The book of Exodus, chapter 31. Wow, it was very interesting, I must, I must say. And I hope that uh, you have also been blessed. Thank you very much for being with us on this discussion. We'll see you next time. Oh, Lee.
Kisha kumla kikombozi Joni tupsifu wala wa mabwana Kwani ukaribu aje kutuchukua Na wakurudi wake ukaribu Tujitayarishe kumla kikombozi Joni tupsifu wala wa mabwana Chukua Upendo uliyo nani yake Yesu mimi sijui Kwa kujitowa hafe msalabani Mimi wake milele Upendo uliyo nani yake Yesu mimi sijui Kwa kujitowa hafe msalabani Mimi wake
nifike kwa koni kuone uso kwa uso unishike kono nitembee na we na we ninyo na we kati ya wote ule kwenye meza ile ya kioo mimi ni pafoni tulie